Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Y'all, we thank you for all things. You are wonderful and magnificent. You alone are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. And we thank you for allowing us to be here now in this place. I'll say it again like I did last Shabbat. We thank you for every breath. No man nor the day or hour. We thank you for the strength that you've given us to be able to worship and praise you this morning. We'll extol your holy name. We only ask that you would feed us with your truth. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, the king may be seated. <clears throat> Anybody notice what's been going on with all these messages that's been coming forth lately? <clears throat> no? Uh, I don't want to distract y'all. Let me let y'all go ahead and get seated. These messages are... All right. uh, you know we've been spending a lot of time in the Torah, right? Yes, sir. These messages are there to develop character, which some of you don't have. Yes, oh, before I get started, I want everybody to know, uh, Arcelio Rett and his family has been banned from the assembly for six months. For six months. So when y'all see them out there, cheesing on Facebook or whatever they're doing, don't think that they are in what I call good standing. Hallelujah. All right? Um, you know, a lot of things you did in Christianity, you ain't doing over here. It ain't happening. I ain't been a pastor for 20 years just so I can let you come over here and show out. Does that make sense? I mean, before you got here, we were already doing this. We were serious. And as the years go on, we're not getting worse. We're going to get better. And we are a people that is clean in our own eyes. It was said to me this morning, somebody said, well, when we get to heaven, there won't be no gate called straight way. No, but there'll be a way that's called straight. Uh-huh. You show him. And it says, straight is the what? Way. Where do you think that name come from? You may not make it to a gate that's called straight way, but you better be on that road. intelligent we are or let me say unintelligent we don't want to give people no accolades when you don't have any why y'all think we come here on Shabbat we come here to be what fed you ever notice that all of a sudden it's not important okay let me see let me see first of all we're very proud that we're in a ministry where we're fed the truth right and then when you get offended well we don't. We follow y'all. We don't follow no man. Y'all ever notice that? Isn't that right? Huh? So how you gonna follow Christ then? Come on, smart Alex. How you gonna follow Christ? Hmm? How 
How could Israel follow Yah without Moses? Well, you ain't Moses. Nope, my name's Charles. That's amazing, isn't it? Hmm? And how could they continue to follow him without Joshua? See how smart we are? We, we, and when we get offended, it's over with. All of a sudden, we think we, we can go straight to Yah. So we got to do away with these scriptures, you know, especially what Jeremiah said, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. You know what happened is, right? When, when, when I start dealing with these folks, all of a sudden, they are the pastors according to his heart and not me no more. <laughs> and we get fed. We get fed so much, you can't even handle what's on the plate. Elder Mitchell was just telling me about there's um, um, an Asian family uh, that Elder Doug put him in contact with. He is a lawyer and has his own practice. And when uh, Elder Mitchell called him, because he, you know, he can't carry phones in the courtroom. So he was happy to get the message. Because he quickly returned the message. As soon as he could get it, to Elder Mitchell came to Shabbat service, and, and of course, they're excited like everybody is when they first come around. Hmm? His wife listened to us eight hours a day. You started off that way. Now you don't listen at all. I wonder what happened. Hmm? What happened? Didn't you start that way? Isn't that something? What happened? Isn't that amazing? What happened, huh? What happens when you first come to the kingdom? You're all excited. But then afterwards, there's stuff that creep in. Hmm? It is. And it starts choking out. The word. That's why you don't have the word around no more. Uh oh. You know how a babe desires the sincere milk of the what? And to a baby, that mama's breast milk is the word. When it gets a little bit older, it's not tugging and pulling at mama's breast. Isn't it right? But they're always looking for direction from father and mother. Leave the natural to the spiritual. Isn't that amazing? Old Jezebel spirit done went up there and almost divided the camp, but I, I got something for her raunchy ass. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't that amazing? Totally amazing, isn't it? You know how right I am? I'm right always. It's like, Come here, brother Victor. I'm going to deal with you, brother. Stand right there, brother. See, as long as I'm dealing with him, Amen, Pastor. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Amen. But, but, but see, when you know, you've been here, if you've been here long enough, what, what happens is, is when he's getting dealt with, you, you, you're quiet. You're like, mm. <sighs> Hell, hallelujah. 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 Glory to the King. You follow me? When you ain't mature, you're like, that's right, Pastor. Hallelujah, Pastor. That's right, Pastor. Get him, Pastor. Sick him. You've been in this for a while, you're like, hmm. Whew. Whew. That's right. See, there. As 
As long as I'm over here, I ain't never been wrong. If he gets offended and he's over here now, now I'm in question. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Especially if I don't do things your way. Hmm? Thank you, brother. I'm sure we can all admit that the high priest was in an appointed position for a reason. So if y'all had Aaron in that position as high priest, guess what that's telling us? You ain't the high priest. That's simple, isn't it? <laughs> this dead season, boy, whoo-wee! It's been something else. And, and see, uh, well, I hope we're going to learn a lot today. You're going to get taught a lot what you learn out of another story. Because in the house of Israel, we need to know how to behave. We, I keep telling you, our problem is we still act like Gentiles. We act like goyims. Yeah, you. You do. Whenever you decide, whenever you pick and choose, then you're Israel. You start acting like a goyim, you expect us to be silent towards you. Hmm? The Bible says that Yah is not the author of confusion. And a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Are you following me? The reason why we come here Shabbat after Shabbat after Shabbat. You know, you know the Messiah went to the temple, right? He stood up. He began to read. And they didn't want to hear too much from him, so he had to preach on the outside. And then the Pharisees would come and find him. And they would always seek to trap him in his word. You get it? It makes no difference. If, he, if he's in the temple, they always try to kill him. Put him out. Lay hands on him. It was always a fight in the temple. Look at him looking. It's always a fight in the temple. Why? Because that's where the demons are. Who would ever think that this Jesus Christ, the way we see him today, who would ever think that we would ever read an account where he would take a whip? I heard all kinds of accounts, too. You know, when he made a whip, he just used the whip as a symbol. <laughs> Shoot, y'all get out. I said, let me see, wait a minute, let me see, the one that's a man of war, the one that get made laws to stone people, the one that told Israel to kill all the Philistines, but all of a sudden he comes, he's just going to sue you. Mm. Same one had the same zeal as Nehemiah had. <clears throat> Nehemiah said, you lodge outside these gates of this city again. <clears throat> Do it one more Sabbath day. I will lay hands on you. <laughs> I wonder if Nehemiah going to be in the kingdom. Not according to the American spirit. You're supposed to be passive, non-violent. It's always violent when you defend yourself. It's always violent when you have a, a zeal of the Most High Yah. Nehemiah said, these folks can't guard the gates, so I'm going to guard them for them. Hmm? They have so twisted our minds today, we don't know where we're coming or going. We don't even know how to be Hebrews. You got everybody now that's popular to be an Israelite. And they won't do it, won't live it. I got
got people that have been Israelites for one and two years and they know more about this Torah than I do. Now, if you believe that, if you believe that, I got some beachfront property in Minnesota. And it never, ever snows there. 75 degrees year round, zero humidity. Y'all believe that? No, I don't believe it either. My friend wrote us again, the Assyrian, and, and not only that, somebody else from that area wrote us again too, using the same name. Isn't that beautiful? And they watch. They watch every Shabbat. Of course, you know what everybody say, right? Yeah, it's easy for them because they way over there. What if they were here? They be sitting up there eating up this word the same way they would now. You understand, we got a lot of people who've been around a long time. A long, long time. They've been doing this thing for a long time. You follow me? And, and plan on doing this in, until the breath go out of their body or the king comes. That's right. That's right. See, that's the difference with a lot of people. Some people got their mind made up. Yeah. Mm hmm. There yeah, ain't nothing else to do. Not in this earth. World tell you, get you a big old house, get you a nice car, and, and, and get all this debt to come along with it, too. All you need is just a simple place to stay. You're, you're only here temporary, right? You're here temporary, right? I mean, we're going to follow Christ. Though he were rich, he became hung around with the all scholar and other earth. You ought to see the inauguration the other day of the rich folk. I bet when they put Obama on that helicopter and he flew off, boy, they were, get your ass out of here. <laughs> I'm going to speak to the people who've got a hue in their skin, black folks. That's what your designation, that's the designation you've been called lately. You know a lot. Y'all some of the dumbest people that y'all ever made. Y'all stupid as I don't know what. I don't care how intelligent you think you are. You are stupid as I don't know what. Somebody give you a piece of watermelon candy, man, you done lost your mind. Give you the bitter truth, man. You just, it's just unbelievable how stupid black folks are today. You would think all these thousands of years of being in captivity would have taught us something. I had a talk the other day out there. This, this guy was talking about Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. I said, Why don't you just be quiet? You don't even know what you're talking about. All right, what's the Democrats done for you? I say, yep, nothing. I got a thing in the mail the other day that told me ahead of time, Obamacare. We're going to deduct this much out of your taxes before you even file. How's that helping me? Force health care. They trip me out when they talking health care. They give you all this stuff and it never makes your health better. Only one gives health. Talking to a friend the other day. Name is not important, but just what he was doing, what he's doing. I said, brother, you wouldn't be on that thing if you just lose some damn weight. You know, people on breathing machines. Lose weight. Y'all know I was in the military, right? 
I used to run a whole lot faster at 198 pounds than I did at 230. I know you find it hard to believe. I used to run a whole lot faster. You ever notice basketball players don't look like football players? You show me a basketball player that look like Vince Wilfork. <laughs> Most people, who in the world is that? He's a nose tackle for Texans. What's this guy? He about 6'6", 360 pounds, 370. The biggest guy they ever seen in basketball was Shaquille O'Neal. You ever see him run down the court? <laughs> Little big guys out there run around. I'm jeez. You can't do this to your body and expect your body to function right. I listened to a thing the other day. Most people have poor circulation. Number one, because you don't drink enough water. But number two, you got ass disease. You sit on your ass too much. You don't move. And it causes your extremities to not function properly. No blood flow. So then the first thing you do is you complain about you can't feel your hands, you can't feel your feet, can't feel your nose, can't feel nothing. Solution is move. I can't move. I'm hurting. Can't move. Move. Well, you can't move because you can't move. Isn't that right? Yes, Let's just tell the truth. You can't move, you can't move because you wouldn't move. Yes, that's right. Did we not see that video the other day, Sister Carol? I said, would I be dead? Listen to this. Now, if, if the doctor tell you, it's right. <laughs> Pastor Dow tell you, it's wrong. You even pay the doctor. Huh? And most of you out there, y'all wear out my email. You wear out Elder Doug. I kid you not. Uh, I don't belong to the ministry because you draft me a, a letter uh, stating religious reasons why come we don't uh, take vaccines. Brother, do I, do I know you? No, no, you don't know me. Tell you what, brother, I'll draft you a letter. Send me $400. For my time, my energy, and my effort. If I had to depend on some of y'all for a living, whoo, you know where I'd be at? We think y'all's done change his order and everything. Let me see. Over in the book of Acts, it says, it's not meat for us. To serve tables. That doesn't mean it's a negative or derogatory thing to do. He just said, we got something else we need to be doing. Now, I'll tell you what. If you want to do what we're doing, I'll serve the tables. You go do what I'm doing. Since it's so easy. See how many people listen to you. We'll give ourselves to prayer. The ministry of the word. You know what it said? Does that mean you, you ain't supposed to be serving tables? Well, we've already served tables. You can't get to that place until you first become a servant. We got people today ain't never served nothing, but they want to be in the place. Anytime somebody is, is that blind like Arcelio is up there, I've done my due diligence. You ain't done shit. You ain't done no due diligence. I got information that pastor don't know. I was sitting right here in the meeting. I, I know everything. You got the 
unjust trying to condemn the just. What did Brother Al say many times on his videos? If you come to Pastor Dow and Pastor Dow tells you something, at times he may put in a suggestion for him, but the truth is, you better do it. <laughs> Let me run this down again. See, the only reason why somebody would agree with, with that spirit like that is because they've got aspirations of doing the same thing. What was the last couple we married here? Was it you? Here. You, I'm talking about this in here. You, Brother Ron, come on. Y'all two come in. Stand right, right there, please. How old are you, Brother Ron? 37. 30? How old are you, Tamar? 27. 27. Now, how is it that these people can actually follow the order of the ministry, but you can't. Hmm? This brother takes pictures of the food his wife cooks when he gets home. He's that enthralled. I guess the old saying goes away to a, a man's heart is through his belly. Don't suck it in, brother. <laughs> Get up here showing out on me. <laughs> Y'all ain't seen him beef up since he been married. Beef steak. You happily married, my brother? Yes, sir. When this little booger got here, she's a booger too. She actually, we, we moved her here on straightway. And she had the opportunity to crap all over herself. And you did, <laughs> didn't you? Yes, sir. And when she do it, she stay far away from me as possible. <laughs> See me coming. Be watching. I hardly ever rebuked you, didn't I? I usually wait until you got it. I was going to see if righteousness is in there. I was going to see if his word could correct her. The Bible says there was a time when a man would slip in his speech. But not in his heart. Well, when is that? Who determines that? Come on. Come on, Pastor. Bring it down. Hallelujah. Somebody slip with you. You start biting their head off. And God discerns the thoughts and the intents of a man's what? How you know when somebody done done something but they really truly didn't mean it, but they did it anyway? Then you, you and your ignorant mistake will say, well, why did they do it, didn't you? Won't you say that? Won't you? Yes. What, 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 won't you? Yes. But then you'll quickly, hypocrite, will turn around and agree with Paul said, the things that I do, yeah. I don't want to do. Yeah. And the things I don't want to do, I them are the things that I do. Yeah. I find in me that is in my flesh no good thing. But when I will to do good, evil is present with me. He goes on to say, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? But I thank y'all. Through Jesus Christ.
So what happened to your, why did they do it anyway then? He said, well, every time you get tempted, there's a way of escape. Hmm? But you don't take it. Uh-oh. And when a man is tempted, don't say y'all did it. That's how many people do. They dress it up. Y'all did it. No, he didn't. When a man is tempted, he's tempted because he's drawn away of his own lusts when he is enticed. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to you. <laughs> she had grown into a nice Israelite sister. Beautiful Israelite sister. Yeah. Of course, people would come here and not knowing that their betrothed <clears throat> Pastor Dow. <clears throat> yeah, what you got, brother? <clears throat> Pastor. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Pastor, I love you, Pastor. Pastor, you're a beautiful man. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, I just tell you those words. Can I hug you, Pastor? <laughs> God, Pastor. Okay, bro, get to what, get, get what you're getting to. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 sister Tamar. No. But I just need a, I said no. You don't need no more answer than that. True. That is true. That is true. Her biological dad is not here. He's not in the faith. That's true. So since she was here in our tribe, guess who ended up being her spiritual father? And if I told her no, you wasn't going to get married to him. She just said, okay. That's true. That is true. We ain't using this kind of integrity, are we? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Got an example setting before us, beautiful every day. Of course, I'm trying to keep people from getting married, though, right? No, sir, not at all. Bro, Ron says, uh, mm, no, Elder Doug says, hey, bro, Ron's waiting on you. What is he waiting on, Elder? Well, he's waiting on you to tell him to get married. I said, man, he been past that time. I'm waiting on him to make the date. <laughs> tell him, boy, that was a quick date too, wasn't it? <laughs> How long did y'all wait to get married since tomorrow? About a year and four months. About a year and four months, I had somebody that couldn't even wait. I told them wait two years. They couldn't wait two weeks. Come on. <clears throat> yep. I can show you the text. Wait two years. Come here, brother Victor. You got a betrothed and... Last year, we thought you were getting married, didn't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, you hear that? We thought he was getting married. I came to Brother Victor. I said, uh, she ain't ready yet. He said, okay, sir. Ain't you been waiting two years? Yes, sir. Ain't you? Burn out today. <clears throat> Burn out tonight. <clears throat> I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for you. <laughs> Jacob could wait. For how long? And we can't wait seven minutes. You see, Rod told you, I ain't got a lick of damn hope in this damn generation. It's my age. Y'all ain't worth shit. Ain't that how they say it in Japan, Tomoko? Don't they say it in Japan? 
They don't dress it up and call it feces and doo-doo. They call it shit in Japan, don't they? Ask her. She'll tell you straight up. Year and four months, over two years. These are young people. I'm old enough to be all of them, Daddy. But you can't wait. Amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Well, Pastor Dow, who's going to check you when you get married? Nobody. You don't check authority. Authority don't answer to you. But since I know how absolute power corrupts, I put myself in a position of accountability. And I don't tell every elder, I don't tell all the elders everything. Because some of them dumb. Not totally, just in certain areas. Just like you are. I'm ignorant. I had some people man, try to fight me the other day. You're not an ignorant man. Yes, I am too. Sorry, let me break it down for you. There are things that I simply just don't know. Would that not make me ignorant in that area? Yes, Been waiting two plus years. Ain't you glad to see the growth? Yes, I am. Yes, sir. Save a lot of heartache and trouble. Bless y'all. Come here, Deacon Bell and Sister Ashley. This is before y'all really knew us about YouTube. How long did y'all wait to get married? Three years. Say it real loud. Three years. No! No! Three years? Ask to come around here with her long blonde hair. <laughs> she getting baptized in Doug Bellis. <laughs> Three years. How old are you, Deacon Bell? He was 38 at the time. How old are you? I'm 34 now. 34 and? I'm 47. How old are you, man? 47. <laughs> How old is he? 47. <laughs> this man, 44 years old at the time. No, 38 years old. And he, he's been a straightway ever since the beginning. And they wait three years, but you can't wait. Utterly oh, amazing, isn't it? but you can't wait. See, we got this thing figured out and we're, and we're gaining more knowledge as we go. When you do this thing the way that we are doing this, because you ain't got no blueprint out there. Nope. We don't have enough jacked up relationships. You can't build a nation and everybody's schizophrenic. Yeah, watch him, he'll hit you in your nose. <laughs> so how is it that we got all these examples, this great cloud of witnesses, but then folks can't wait? Hmm? Three, 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 three years? Three years? Somebody say uno. Dos, Dos. Tres. tres. 
Ein, zwei, drei, one, two, three. That doesn't mean that everybody, if I tell you three years, five years, six years, that doesn't mean it's going to probably take that on. It depends on you. When a man find a wife, he find a what? And you ain't finding wives, they ain't no good. Because if you, she was a good thing, you'd attain favor. Isn't that what the book says? Yes, sir. Ain't you had to learn a lot? A lot, Pastor. This woman used to beat up men. Fight men. One of the first things she said to me after hearing me preach, she said, you know, Pastor, I'm going to tell you straight up. Because she's ghetto. <laughs> Ain't that something? Lafayette, Tennessee. No damn black people. Ghetto. <laughs> she said, Pastor, if you'd have been one of these punk ass preachers up here, I ain't no way I'd have listened to you. Something like that. Like that. She said it just like that. Mm-hmm. Had not been in your face nose to nose. Yes. I said, you can do that shit out there with all them people. You ain't doing it with me. <laughs> Somebody said, what? Yeah. Y'all had that kind of talk. You better believe it. I'm the only real father figure she's ever known in her life. Most of you don't even know. Let me see. The Bible says we've had fathers after the flesh. Now we got fathers after the spirit. Isn't that right? And what the, what the people would do today, they would say, you know what, <laughs> since you got no father in the flesh, I'm going to exercise my Gentile right and pull the Gentile card and do what I want. Thereby trying to bind us to make us think that we can't do nothing in judgment. Three years. And how long y'all been married? I ain't never calling y'all back up here again. Just 2010. Isn't that something? Well, maybe you can get this one. How many children you got? Two. Okay. <laughs> you got to make it easy on them, man. Just a bonus question, ain't it? In the bonus round now, ain't it? How long has Renee and Will been betrothed? Don't start hitting y'all Israelites inside here with sticks. <laughs> August. September, August, September, October, November, December, six months. She lives in Kentucky. He lives in Georgia. Six months. He works. She's in school. What school is she in? Preschool? Ignoramuses. Y'all see, y'all getting this, right? And they don't even have a date yet. That date is going to be determined by him. Oh, they, they can get together. He going to be the final decision. Y'all ain't never heard nothing like it, have you? Y'all ain't never heard nothing like it. In America, you just do what you want to do. In Israel, you don't do what you want to do. Mm-mm. No, you don't. You know how I know you can't do what you want to do? You're not your own. 
For you've been bought with a price. You want to be your own? Go back out to the world. You're not going to exercise Gentile lordship over here. Then they're going, well, you people, all you want to do is boss around folk, get in people. No. We are in the, somebody say the restoration of all things. Isn't that true? Because we're active restoring and nobody else is active restoring that we know of. Does that mean we should stop restoring? Amazing, isn't it? Hypocrite. Thank y'all very much. Maybe I'll find y'all way back to your seat since you don't know what that is either. (laughs) Yeah, that means if I choose to get married, I don't have to answer to nobody in the ministry. Well, who do you think you are? You already beat me to it. You tell me. But everybody else is under me. They should be making it this way. Well, who do you think you are? They got pastors and elders at these home assemblies. Faithful brothers at these communities, that's a try. That's a try. Did not Abraham tell Isaac, hey, we're going to go get someone from my brother's house? Why come they weren't with Abraham? They still part of the try. See, Erica, she's got a husband. A family. She's part of that tribe down there now. Still Israel. Well, she, if Elder Mitchell passes away, that's why you, people need to be careful who you choose as a spouse. As it stands right now, Brother Greg has to marry her. Period. It ain't open for discussion. It, don't, it doesn't matter how many wives he has until a son comes. If Elder Mitchell passed away and he does have a son and he has a daughter, she is free and at liberty to marry someone in that tribe, meaning Israel. Now look at him. Not in the world, in Israel. See, this is far removed from us. It's real far removed. Yeah, that means she could marry someone from Straightway, someone from Kentucky, someone from Georgia, someone from South Carolina. But she don't only if she only has Abigail, but no son, she has to stay in that tribe. I'm going to ask you a question. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? That's just a hypothetical. Because truth is, you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow. We just had a faithful brother pass away. Brother Chris, man, giant of a man. In shape. You see him, nothing but just sun. Just nothing but smile. There ain't nobody got nothing negative to say about him. Y'all called him home. Now he's got a wife and she's a widow. The way y'all would do it out in the world is... Okay, go and get everything in the world and stuff, and then, okay, then, you know, she just wait on the next man to come. But in Israel, 
Pastor Corey and him has just inherited a family to take care of. Yeah, Pastor Corey is now saddled. You got to take care of her now. Is she under 60 years old? Good. Got to be taken care of. The law, the law is totally against the oppression of strangers, the oppression of the fatherless, and the oppression of the widows. Yah actually charges Israel to make sure that they are taken care of. Who's going to do that in this generation? Who's even trying to position themselves to do that in this generation? Pastor Cora has got to provide a home for her now. A place to stay. And the children. Now who want to be pastor? Now who want to be... Uh oh. You sisters, all you sisters run around here and stuff. Bro, Ron, he looked like he's rambunctious. <laughs> they get started, man. He may want to have eight people in the tribe. If he passes away, we're responsible for her livelihood and her upkeep. You know the way things used to be in ancient times? The widows would end up out there prostituting themselves. She's vulnerable. People would take advantage of her. See, when I get out there, I'm going to ask Pastor Cor a few questions. I want to make sure this is a widow indeed. If I hear, get a report that all she was was a thorn in the side, rebellious, stubborn, stiff-necked, didn't support her husband, won't take care of the home. See you later. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Or nice knowing your husband. See, you people don't know about putting the evil away. We can't have that kind of sister. I didn't say she was. I'm just saying we can't have that kind of sister around to taint the other sisters. If you got bacteria in a place and you don't clean that place, what's that thing going to do? You ever seen a fruit bowl with one bad fruit? You ever seen just one bad fruit? All the rest of the fruit could be nice, holy, I mean, but with just one bad fruit would destroy the whole bowl. You get rid of the bad fruit and you keep the rest that's in the bowl. I thought you people say you read the Bible. You read it, but you don't believe it enough to live it. The world, they got a system out there that love to take care of you. Have you groveling and squabbling at their feet. Yeah. Utterly amazing. The assembly is not supposed to be chargeable. What happened to all the Torah believers now? All the instruction believers now? See, the reason why we do what we want to do because we believe that ain't nobody, nobody, is, nobody knows more than we do. And nobody is as good as I am. That's why we do things. Y'all see the reason why there was so much rebellion in Israel? All you got to do is look at yourself. You want to know how rebellious ancient Israel was? Look at yourself. Take a good look in the mirror. You ain't too far from, from what is written. 
The scripture said, don't you even think yourself, bud, that was written. See, now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are not under authority now. But you'll go to work and be under authority, though. Hmm? Isn't that amazing? You go in the military and be under authority. Isn't that amazing? Then all of a sudden, you, you come out here, well, we're at liberty to do what we want. Yeah, you can. Not in this ministry, you ain't. You don't belong to yourself no more. When you join the kingdom, it's just like joining the military. Your opinion don't matter. A sergeant don't care one bit about what a private got to say. A lieutenant don't care one bit about what a sergeant got to say. A general, damn soul, don't care about what people got to say. Pastor Fox, he said, Pastor, you know, Pastor Fox got all kinds of stories. Pastor Fox said, he was telling about the aerosol. He went to aerosol school, right? And um, he was telling me how there's this one old fat officer, a woman. First of all, she was too old to be going through that school anyway. And she didn't make the 12 mile road march, the last thing to do to graduate in time. So this two star general told the people to pass her. Told the commander to pass her. A one star general got found, found out what was going on, pulled her out of the graduation line. And said, you go over and sit. You know why? Because even though if she was a, a major or a colonel, you don't talk back to authority. The two-star general found out that the one-star general did that, which was right. Put him at parade, put him at attention, and rebuked him in front of the whole. I mean, they was all to the side, but boy, you could if, if you could. I'm sure you could pick up words. Now you got two generals, two. One or two star, one or one job. One star. The two star outranks the one star. That one star man was at attention getting his rear end chewed out. And he was right. See the reason why you don't want unjust rulers? They show favoritism towards their own. That one star general outranked everybody out there on the field but that two star. And there was no back talk either. Pastor Files got back to his unit. They looked at him and said, hey, where's the aerosol bag? He said, I don't want to wear that thing. Why? Because what that woman did. You didn't see what I saw? Why should I wear that when they let stuff like this get by? I went through all this hell for two weeks. I don't need to wear it. Guess what? You will wear it. <laughs> That's something you individually accomplish, but because these people are bootlickers, that's no reflection on your accomplishment. That's a, a teaching tool to let you know how you ought not to be. And everybody, it was just a it was a, an oppressive graduation. Because everybody knew that they hadn't passed. People couldn't, they couldn't even re rejoice. Because that, that two-star general outranked everybody out there. The only person that could actually come and check him was if there was a brigadier general on the post. I don't know how it laid out. If there was a three-star general, they could check him. Another two-star general could check the two-star general if he had more time and grade. But you went through all that and you couldn't even really enjoy your accomplishment because of the double standard. Favoritism. So don't give me that crap now about women passing ranger school. I don't want to hear that crap. I know you've had to relax the standards. How could you enjoy all this you just endured and, and earned when, if you saw something like that too. 
That's why we need right leadership. We need righteous leadership because, hey, the people are going to start mourning. Uh-oh. Yeah, the people are going to start mourning and they start seeing all these injustices. Y'all understand that? Nobody has a right to be running carte blanche for nothing. That one general said, no, not a general. That one guy said, uh, uh, the centurion. I'm in authority. I tell these men to go, they go. I tell them to come, they come. I'm also a man under authority. It's amazing how that when we get out here in this world right here, we, we, we ain't accountable to nobody. Where y'all get this attitude from? You didn't know when you come to this ministry that you submitting to the dictates and the mandates of this ministry? You didn't know that? We have accountability. Uh-oh. See, what happens is everybody think, okay, all right, if one, see, this is how you do it. If one person get by with something you think is wrong, then you think you ought to get by with the same thing. What if we didn't catch them, but we caught you? First thing you start doing is pointing fingers. But this situation ain't about them. This situation ain't about you. And beside that, what happened to him that covered a multitude of sin? If anything, you should be over there correcting that. But see, what you want to do is you want to look to get by like everybody else perceived to get by. What a sad state we're in. What a sad state we're in. It's a sad, sad world. So we got clouds of witnesses all over this place. Elder Doug got 50 wives and he came to me and asked for every single one of them. And Elder Doug's older than I am. Look at him looking. <laughs> I don't know how he do it. 50, 50 of them. He getting it done. That word just got y'all so, you know, convicted that you can't even, you just can't even jump out of your own self for a moment and just say, ha, 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 because you're dirty. You're just dirty. The majority of people I know cannot live on this community called straightway. Why? The main problem we are having in Israel is radical individualism. Radical, too. Double Ring 520 says, listen to the book, you do not bear false witness against who? The words, Yahweh spoke to your all to all your assemblies in the midst of I mean, in the mountain of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more, and he wrote them on two tablets, tablets of stone, and gave them to me. In other words, after y'all got finished saying all these commandments, everybody else heard the confirmation. And he etched them in stone with his own finger. You follow me? Truth. Means stability. See, when someone tells the truth, that means it's stability, firmness, truth, trustworthy, assuredly, reliable, faithful, right, sure, reliableness, verity. Also, as spoken of a testimony and judgment of divine instruction, truth as a body of ethical or religious knowledge, true doctrine. So, y'all see what truth is, right? Truth is that which is opposed to falsehoods. Truth is a presupposition of faithfulness. Presupposition is a thing tactically assumed beforehand at the beginning of a line of argument or course of action. In other words, synonyms, presumption, 
assumption, preconception, subsidition, theory, belief. In this account right here, 2 Kings 18, 16, and at that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of Yahweh and from the pillars. That's what truth is. Truth is a pillar. Stability. It's reliable. It's sure. It's sure. You get it? Which Hezekiah, the king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Now, a pillar one could rest on, rely on, and believe. That's why it's very important that you be truthful. Zechariah 8, 16 says, These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye to every man the truth to his neighbor and do what? Execute. I promise you, we ain't, gonna, ain't nobody going to judge me. Really? What did y'all say about the elders um, that he had set up at the tribes of Israel that they may do what? Judge the small matters. See what this Gentile world has undone to us? Doesn't make us think that we ain't got, uh uh. We function just like these folks do. Amazing. And peace in your gates. Truth telling relates to the character of men. Our problem of today is we think everybody thinks and acts, do and judges just like we do. If this was the case, then why, or then we would be one ignorant assembly, wouldn't we? I got to learn how to type. <laughs> Truth, fidelity, faithfulness, reliability, integrity. All strengths. Every single one of them. You as an Israelite brother and sister, that should be your character. See, what you do is you, if you see a character flaw that's in you, you assume that everybody else has that. And that's why you do what you do. In other words, you want a license to sin. See, a presupposition is the assumption of what you assume that somebody else could be or may be doing. You don't know, but that's just the way you are. See, how we be able to develop our character if we didn't get sound teachings like this. Sound doctrines. Exodus 18.21 says, look at this. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people able men. What kind of men? Such as do what? Fear y'all. Men of what? Men of hating. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Hating covetous. You follow me? Uh, somebody, Brother Chris, they said, they said, boy, it looks like y'all a cult down there. I said, really? I said, I think you're probably in a greater cult than anybody is. Well, what do you mean by that? I said, how, how many cults you know to arm their people? <laughs> so that makes you a fool, don't it, ignoramus? Are you armed? Silent. Nothing. So guess who in the cult? Cult of ignorance. Crazy, isn't it? Back to this, men of truth. Men of truth do what? They hate covetousness. And place such over them. Over who? The people. Is that right? To be rulers. What? Am I reading right? Yes, sir. Rulers. Yeah, rulers of a thousand, rulers of a hundred, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. Yes. Utterly amazing. All of a sudden, we got to do that no more. You know the rebellious people. Oh, y'all ain't nothing but just a bunch of mindless people. Okay, so what? Well, that means you got your mind, right? Deuteronomy 1, 13 says, take you wise men, understanding, and known among your what? And I will make them what? 
Why do you think when we ordain people, we do it in the open? These are people that are known. Nobody ever says, nope, they ain't deserving. I'd be happy to hear your case. I would. Nehemiah 7 2 says, And I gave my brother Hananiah and, and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a what? A what? He was a what kind of man? And feared who? Above many. In other words, this man has something about him that was different than everybody else. The only way you can see that is how people walk it out. Yeah. To Helium 86 11 says, Teach me thy way, O Yah, and I will walk in thy what? Unite my heart to fear your name. 25 5 says, Lead me in your what? In your what? And teach me, for thou art Yahweh of my salvation. On thee do I wait. Oh, do, I, do I? Do I? Do I? So tell, I know y'all speaking to everybody, right? Exclusively. Amazing, huh? So we see y'all got an order. Yes or no? And this is David. He is the authority. He said, on you, I'm going to wait all the day. Because there was nobody above David. Uh-oh. Tealion 43, 3. Set forth your what? And your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your set-apart mountain and to your what? Dwelling place. Man, ain't that something? That's what truth should be doing. All people of truth, all users of truth may be tested for correspondence to what is real. We'll get into some case law here, okay? Moral integrity, scripture, condemns lying and labels it as hateful to Yah. Just where the liars go. Hmm? Right, he called Leviticus 19.11, do not steal, do not what? Lie, do not deceive one another. Just don't do it. What kind of pastor would I be if I deceive you? You wouldn't be listening. Be too offended to. We're going to go deeper in intelligence here. Maliciously, that's Proverbs. 12.22, lying lips are an abomination to who? Yahweh. Yahweh. But those who deal truly, who, who deal truly, are his what? 12.19, the lip of truth is established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a what? Won't last. Won't last. Bro, saying, Psalm 52. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. We're going to school after this. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Going to school. Did you ever sleep in class when you was in school, Lisa? You better not sleep in this class. I'm going to baptize you with that water up there. <laughs> Glad y'all wide-eyed. Come on, bro, St. Reed. Why boast thyself in mischief? Oh Why boast man. yourself in mischief what? Oh, mighty man. Oh, mighty man. Come on. The goodness of Yah endureth continually. How long does it endure? Continually. All right, read on. Thy tongue device to mischief, like a sharp razor working deceitful. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, 
O thou deceitful tongue, Yah shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Y'all see what's happening? When someone is like this, wicked like this, y'all root them out of the land of the, we in the land of living. These people get rooted out, but they go away and boy, they get on Facebook and cheese and they throw slanders and false witnesses and lies and Amazing, isn't it? You go out there to the court system in the world and you get a negative judgment, you don't even go to Facebook. You take your salt. Go away angry and you dare not talk back. Displace fear. See how hypocritical we are? But we're supposed to tolerate you because we're y'all's men, right? No, we'll tolerate y'all, right? Keep going. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not y'all his strength. Y'all hear that? Yes. Now, on this other situation with Brother Arcilio, he said he's done done his due diligence. Y'all hear that? He said he done done his due. How you do your due diligence when you don't even know the whole story? I know the whole story. He, all, he, get, he got married to a woman that got put out of Israel for six months. And now they're banned again for another six months. But you know the whole story. Amazing, isn't it? And brother and up there are saying, pastor is not upset for no reason. There's something going on. Well, we don't see no, they ain't no, they, we, they, he didn't break the law, dumb dumbs. Why you thought, why would I get upset? If someone did what? <laughs> see, I turn around and let them parade that thing around. That's going to taint the whole assembly. And that viper get a hold of them other sisters. Being an older woman. How many times? I ain't going to do this viper demonstration no more. Huh? That viper turn around and what do you think that woman going to do? She had to be put away so she stopped biting. But he done a due diligence. In other words, you know more than I do. No, you don't. Your lust no more than I do. Would I tell you anything that would be a detriment to you? They call in on the broadcast. Old oh, pastor, y'all heard him? Y'all hear him? Y'all ain't never heard him. Y'all notice they ain't calling no more at all now. You don't hear the party going on in the background now. I wonder what happened. I mean, because they get on Facebook and it looks like a party. Why can't we party no more on during the broadcast? Used to wear us out every week. All of a sudden, silence. I wonder what happened. There's a Bible verse that said, The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Well, Pastor Dow, what else happened? We're going to get on that because a lot of it ain't none of your business. Hmm? When, we, when we declassify the information 30 years from now, you can know. <laughs> but I'm dealing with the root things at hand right here. Read. Lo, this is the man that made not Yah his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. Y'all hear that? Yeah. And strengthened himself in his wickedness. See how what people do? They strengthen themselves in the wickedness. Anytime you're strengthening your wickedness, you're always looking for somebody to ally 
who's got the same ideals and perception that you do. So if somebody got the same ambitions, it's already in their heart, they the same thing they want to do, they're going to agree with you 100%. Because they're just looking for a way to say, okay, good, I'm going to get married now too. Show more honor to the world. At least out in the world, they, you, you'll go marry a woman. For, how much is a marriage license nowadays? $35. That's a cheap marriage. State prostituting women. The state is prostituting women. You pay $35 for your bitch. And don't tell me that the state don't think that she ain't nothing but a bitch. I'll prove it to you. Go buy a dog. <laughs> see, this is how, the way I talk, now you see the reason why the men of y'all got stoned. Now, you have to think about this. What was the condition of Israel that they will all be collected to want to stone the prophets? You mean to tell me that the prophets in y'all's eyes was the only one that was right? Come on. Yes. Come on. Jesus said, which of the prophets have you not stoned? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, that means all the people can be wrong and the prophets right. Remember, y'all don't need many. Even false prophets would rise up. You remember that false prophet that rose up against Jeremiah and started prophesying? Even slapped him. That added emphasis, don't it? I got to be right. See, watch. Smack. Boy, it didn't go well with him, did it? Y'all took care of it. I'm trying to show y'all, don't y'all believe all these people out there that's moving their mouth and wagging their tongue? They desire to lead you astray. Read on, brother Shane. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of Yah. Mm. I trust in the mercy of Yah forever. Y'all hear that? And ever. How long did it take, brother Rich, for you to marry Tomoko? 22 months. What year was that? Do you remember? Uh, it was the year uh, 1999. 1999. You mean to tell me straightway been doing this? Night. So tonight we gonna party like it's 1999. When I heard that song in 84, I didn't think 99, 1999 was ever coming. That was something like the Jacksons. Well, we passed 1999 now. And Prince is dead. You mean to tell me we've been having this type of standard for that long? But you know more than we do. I know. Y'all got it all figured out. Read on, brother Shane. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Ain't his name good? Yeah. And all this has to do with him waiting. <laughs> see, I got to put this out because some of you ignoramuses out there, when you see people make videos, posting on Facebook, you ain't got no discernment at all. Elder Felix is the elder up there. You only see half of the congregation on one side. You don't even see the other side. 
And you ain't got, you see them, somebody take a bit, oh, y'all sweet, y'all look good, and you don't know nothing that's going on. Nothing. You better be careful when you make these passive agreements with people, lest you become a partaker of their sins as well. You see the reason why the holiness churches are failing today? Because there ain't no holiness in it. There's no separation. There's no set apart. You know why? Because all the preachers are faggots. They're infeminate. Bull dikers. They ain't going to preach no clean, pure word if they dirty. The Bible says your own heart will condemn you. And if your heart condemns you, you ain't touching certain things. That's why when you're guilty, when you see somebody else being judged or something, you ain't got nothing to say. In other words, you ain't got no stone in your hand. Dirty. Do you wonder why I come? Why is pastor screaming and hollering like that? Because I'm righteous. Hate iniquity. All the righteous hate iniquity. All the righteous rejoice in truth. Look at them. Is this too strong for y'all? Well, the Bible says straight is the way. Oh, we back to straight way again, right? <laughs> Narrow is the gate. And few that be the what? You got this side over here in transgressing, rejoicing in iniquity. And you got the other half of the congregation mourning. That's right. Like, what the world going on? I got brothers calling me up saying, I don't want my pastor, I don't want my wife around that woman Hallelujah. or that man. On, I say, brother, you're right too. Yep. Brother Steve, main one. You know, he just got married to Sister Esther. Yes. We even posted a video. We were having a good time up there, too. I bet a lot of them people, boy, that's the, that's the only sermon they ever heard during a marriage. Because I, I, I'm married folk, and I give them a sermon, too. <laughs> While I preach in Elder Roof, I'd be up there, then, well, hold on, wait a minute. I got, I got to say something. And I get right back to the ceremony. Hold on, wait a minute. I got to say something else. That's the only clean word them wicked people up there are going to ever hear. Look at Brother Stephen and Sister Esther. They're not beautiful. You people better be careful about this Facebook and stuff. You better be careful about who you run to and agree with because they're making videos. All you got to do, don't you got any discernment at all? Don't. don't you got a lick of discernment at all? A lie is the intentional deception of an individual who has the right to know the truth of us. The deception must be intentional, else guilt does not attach to the one. Lying should be carefully distinguished from concealing. You don't know the difference between lying and concealing because everything's a lie to you. That's how simple you are. Listen very closely to these next statements. So do I have your undivided attention? It is proper to conceal facts from individuals whom we have no right to see. Is it proper to conceal facts from individuals whom we have no right to see? The answer is no. Concealment is a sin when and only when an obligation exists to reveal the fact which is concealed. Quotes from Asa's Madness. See, I'm not that intelligent. Surely you didn't think I was talking like that. (laughs) 
You, you hypocrites, you. I thought we were going to read the Bible. Okay, if you want to know something about law, you go to Black's Law Dictionary, don't you? So now who the hypocrite is then? I got, I got no sense of recognized intelligence. Yeah, they the one who made all them quotes. And I said, you know what? This is good. This is good. Look, look at it. You, you want to know them for yourself? Get, get the book, Abstracts of Course and Lectures on Mental and Moral Philosophy. Lying is more than a breach of promise. Lying is a moral evil in that it violates an obligation that comes from the relations of the parties involved. Intentional deception cannot be determined unless there is a half claim. Meaning, you do not have the right to know. See, a lot of things that's going on, you ain't got a right to know. And think about this. A lot of times, you wanted to stick your nose into something, and you wasn't even strong enough to handle what you're sticking your nose into. And then you end up being judged by the very thing that you condemned because you stick your nose into something falsely. See, everybody think that they can handle everything. No, you can't. If we, presupposition, if we set up here and propose or we believe or we think or we assume that somebody is sinning, what happens to your spirit? Your peace, your happiness, your joy, it's all taken from you. You can't even be a good, true brother. You can't be a good, true sister of them. Because you think that they are sinning. And I tell them the truth. You become very hard towards someone that ain't even offend you. That's when you start walking in your own book of the law. That's when you start doing that which is right in your own eyes. That's when you become judge, jury, and executioner. That's when you start taking the law in your own hands. And don't even have the authority to even do nothing about it because you can't even police yourself. So how strong are you to be able to adjudicate a matter when you can't even keep yourself at peace? You ever heard a thing called weighty matters? In the world, they got a very simple statement. Mind your own business. Y'all get it? Can't be at peace at somebody else's happiness because you and your book of the law have already deemed it sin. You ever check your behavior towards them? Oh, it's quiet. It's quiet in here. It's so quiet in here, you, you can't even hear a 10-pound weight drop. Pass down it says a pin drop. No, no, a 10-pound weight. Mm. Many times what you believe to be a lie is not. I'll give you an example. Our faithful brother ugly he used to come to the feast he got to the border they started asking him uh, where are you going? going to Tennessee straightway the guy gets on the computer and stuff found out this guy got a personal vendetta against us he has done messed up brother ugly's passport and everything for the last four or five years brother ugly why? because brother ugly was doing what he believed to be his heart telling the heathen the truth What are you doing that good talk? Man, what do you do? What do you do in that instance? What do y'all do in this instance? I'll tell you what I do in the instance. Where are you going? Uh, Nashville. Where you got your good talk for? Hopefully I can meet up with some country music stars. Why are you saying that? Damn it, you don't have a need to know. You just do your job. 
But you equate it as lying. To the heathen? Boy, I would hate for y'all to try to trust you with something. You sing. Boy, you sing, you're, you're tell, tell them everything. I, 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 you know why you do that? Fear and insecurity. Well, if you ain't got nothing to hide, then you need to tell it. I ain't got nothing to hide. Y'all remember David? When he started putting on that act where he started drooling at the mouth. If y'all saw the way I crossed the border last year going into Canada, y'all would been like, what in the... You thought I was the dumbest man that ever walked the face of planet Earth. Isn't that right, Carol? Guy said, uh, sir, could you let the back window down? I go, I looked at Carol, I looked at her, I said, the back window don't let down. <laughs> Carol said, honey, he's talking about that back window. I go, oh. <laughs> to me, back window is back window. He looked at me like, I'm like. We drove past the border. I the car. I said, how you like that act? <laughs> it was so real, you really believed I actually was that way. <laughs> See, but you, you don't, you don't let down all the windows. You just say you come on out, open up doors. That... We ain't got no wisdom, Israel. See, this is the reason why we need teachers like this. That's the reason why when you seen something went on in the Bible, they didn't mind calling names so you didn't make no mistake of who they was talking about. They had to use those as examples so that you'd fear. I love all the brothers and sisters up there. I just hate what they're doing. Because they're right in their own eyes, justifying themselves. Many times what you believe is not a lie. Concealment is proper or even a duty when it does not violate a moral obligation. Understand it. Doesn't the government, I mean, does the government tell people everything? Oh, but they're concealing something. You have a right to know. They work for you. Isn't that something? No, because it would violate national security where you run your mouth. You'd be on Facebook telling the Russians everything. Somebody take you, you're just an ignoramus. You can't hold water. You can't hold water. I mean, these are things we need to fact check. This is real, ain't it, Brother D? Need to know claim. See, this is, all this is instructions. This is Torah. All this is law. And you don't even function after this law. You don't know. That's why we need to be taught. Somebody got to teach it. Y'all see the silhouette of a man, but it's the father that does the teaching. What he says to us is, he says, you feed my sheep. In other words, you be willing to feed my sheep. Make yourself available to feed my sheep. Why is it that when I talk, you have a clear signal? No distortion in your mind. Everything's coming across crystal clear. You're like, yeah, only when you're wicked, that's when the signal gets distorted. You got some CNN. 
Because everything you hear is an attack on you. Because you too busy trying to protect the devil that's deceiving you. There you are. And you can't hear with a pure mind. You can't hear with a good conscience. When you're righteous, everything is sweet. Uh-oh. When you're offended, everything's bitter. No, won't you take account of your behavior when you're offended? Instead of you looking at everybody else, check yourself. Need a no claim. You as a saint simply cannot handle the information of others because your mind does not function after right ruling. Concealment. Does not Yah conceal prophecy from us? Does he not? Wait a minute. Why don't you just tell us everything? I mean, why is he being deceitful to us? Does not Yah conceal prophecy? Why aren't you taking them to task? Almost regularly involves the withholding of part of the truth while part of the truth is communicated. Case law. Nothing is affirmed or denied. When y'all tells you something, he's not affirming nothing or denying anything. Watch this. We got a case law coming up where nothing is affirmed or denied even though they know. Did y'all hear what I said? What did I say? Even though they know. Does that make it simple? What did I just say? Even though they know. Luke 24, 19. You remember on the road to Emmaus? Remember Christ having a conversation with them? They begin to tell them about all the things that take place that happened at Jerusalem? Look at what Christ said. And he said to them, what things? Did he not know? <laughs> what is he doing? He knew because they pertained to him. <laughs> Acting like he don't know. <laughs> and he knew more than they did. Oh, man. Man, you say you love the Messiah. In your mind, the way it's shaped today, he'll be a deceiver. The way you think and the way you process thought from his Gentile world and mindset, does he not know everything that took place? Then why would he say to what, what thing to these people then? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before Yah and all the people. And he said he'll listen to us the whole time. <laughs> he said he'll listen to the whole time. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you be talking to me and I say, really? Yeah, what? And you start singing like a canary. And I'm sitting here looking just as stupid and dumb as I am. Case law of Yahshua. He knew he meant to draw them out. In other words, your heart has a communication. And you start opening up your mouth, it tells everything about you. Yeah. To the minds of those who have the intelligence that has exercised themselves towards the will of Yah. Right. 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 See, if you start telling what things to your buddy and friend, you have favoritism. Right. Right. Their mind operates a total different way. Is this too high? Is this, is, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Concealment. If truth is withheld, when one does not have the right or know what? Legitimate claim to the truth. If truth is withheld, when one does not have the what? Or no legitimate claim to the what? Truth. truth. 
Y'all was getting ready to speak. Watch this. Who in here will say Yahweh is a deceiver and a liar? I mean, is he not true? You sure of that? You positive? He withholds information from us all the time. Watch this one. 1 Samuel 16, 1. And Yahweh said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and go. And I will send thee to Jesse a Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said. Somebody said it and Samuel said. Samuel said. How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And Yahweh said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to Yahweh. What is Yahweh doing? If we, if we talk to your retarded spiritual mindset, you would say, he's lying. He's lying. What you say? What is the real purpose? Of Samuel going, he's going to anoint a king. One of the sons of Jesse. Is that right? But he's also worried about Saul killing him. So Yahweh said, tell him, you come to perform a sacrifice. He'll believe you. You know the reason why? Because Saul don't have a need to know. So if I communicate like it or the elders communicate like it, to you we're liars, right? Come on, y'all intelligent. Come now. We're being deceitful, right? Okay, if you're going to judge us like it, then judge y'all too. You hypocrites. You think you need to know everything. You don't need to know nothing. But what you need to know is what, how to save yourself. Ain't that the way your Gentile mind operates? Well, they ain't, hit it. they ain't really telling us everything. As if you can do something about it. And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you. What you should do. And you shall anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. Elder Rufus loves me. When I pop up and show up down there in Georgia, the first thing they say, why is he here? Why is Pastor Dow here? Am I telling the truth? Yes. Jennifer didn't be like, Pastor Dow's here, why is he here? I'm like, damn, roll out the red carpet, man. Kill the fatty calf. Yeah, we doing all that, but why is he here? <laughs> he just don't show up for, just to say kumbaya. He come here for a reason. Elder, they think I'll be making this stuff up. Then it's time for me to leave. Elder Ruth go, whew, boy. <laughs> I know you people can't comprehend it because you have no honor and respect for nobody. That's, that, that's right. You, you don't, you, it's kind of hard. To, I understand. I understand. America's done a good job on you. Samuel was just a man. These people are elders in the city. Why are they worried about Samuel coming? Why? Because every time Samuel comes, stuff gets stirred up. <laughs> I could go up there right now to Arcelio's house and they all be sitting up there with their vindictive hard countenances. <laughs> D. 
because they're right in their own eyes. Look at them looking at me. The elders like, boy, Samuel's here. <laughs> Man, what the world? <laughs> and said, uh, hey, Samuel, do you come in peace, brother? <laughs> they want to know from the get-go. Come on, man. Samuel's got this reputation of taking swords and running them through people, man. And he said, peaceably. Do you think they're going to still believe it? <laughs> the only way they're going to believe that he came in peace is when they see the back end of him. Leaving out of that town. <laughs> and he's far away. Don't the Bible just tell on ourselves? Don't it just tell on? Don't, don't it just do it? Well, I ain't fearing no man. You mean you ain't fearing y'all? Oh, I know the fear of man brings the snare, but you don't know what that means either. It's just utterly amazing. Oh, just utterly amazing. As if we asked for this. And he said, peacefully I'll come to sacrifice unto y'all. Sanctify yourselves. And come with me to the sacrifice. To the what? The what is Samuel really there for? Why ain't he telling the elders that? See how these counts are loaded and you just read right over them. Just get, yeah. You just read right over them. You think you done read it too. And you, yeah, I read, I read. Y'all told this first Samuel, told this 16 chapter. As you did, huh? Tell me about it. And you get to singing. And I said, you ain't read nothing. Yeah. Sorry, but you can't hear without a preacher. He can't preach except to be sent. See, you ever notice how much of the sum of wisdom you are as long as I'm talking? But if I gave you a passage of scripture and asked you to explain it, all of a sudden, blanks. You shouldn't know from the get-go. If I give you a passage of scripture and ask you to explain it, you should shut up and say, I don't know. Oh, never mind. Why do you think I'm giving it to you? What do you think I'm looking at when I'm sitting there watching you and all your theology? You won't be, ah, ba, 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 and on this side, I'm going to look at this damn fool. Understand us what thou readest? How can I accept some man God me? A little amazing, isn't it? Ariel, when you be checking my mistakes on my PowerPoint, you didn't know all this stuff would be coming out of these messages, do you? Sound pretty basic to you, don't they? Until y'all uses that life. And he sanctified Jesse. And his sons, and called them to the what? Do I tell everyone everything? There are things I do not communicate even to certain elders. I actually tell some elders some things over here, and I, over here I don't I don't tell the same elders over here the same thing I tell them over here. Because everything is on a need to know basis. You have a need to know, I let you know. You don't, you ain't gonna know. Am I being deceitful? Undermining? Got something behind my back? But how do you compute and calculate? Why? As an authority, I am the one who determines who has a need to know, not the other way around. Some elders, I can trust more than others with information. I know the challenges of many people's hearts. 
I'm experiencing dealing with humanity. You may feel, here we go, your, your quote, pastor does not tell me everything, so I do not need to tell him nothing either. Then I start withdrawing from your ass and stuff. You wonder what's going on. You start charging me. What's wrong with pastor? There's always something wrong with me when you're the one that's wrong. There's always something wrong with everybody else when you're wrong. You're doing wrong, but you question everybody else is right. A few problems with this statement. Number one, you do not have a need to know. Number two, you're not in a position to affect change. Number three, you're not the one in authority, and authority does not have to answer to you. Can you imagine some of your fathers in here? You having a discussion with your wife and your child questioning you the way you question your wife. How, you, how would you react? Oh, so you do understand this. Oh, you, you crystal clear now. Oh, you and your wife go in the bedroom and you say some things you don't want the children to hear. But the children come out and say, you come out in the living room. Hey, uh, what were y'all talking about? <laughs> if they're a good father and mother, boy, the, the hair going to raise up on the back of their neck. You little. Think you are talking to me like that, boy. I'm... Father, I'm trying to make it through this one. And, and, and I'm making more allies, but I'm also making enemies, too, because people don't understand the intent. Just because I mention somebody's name, I don't, everything I preach is not personal. You're going to take it personal because you feel it. I don't feel it. You take it personally. You take rebuke personally, correction personally. You take everything personally. you just personal. Are y'all hearing anything? The clear signal's still up? From a natural sense, and remember, the children of the, wise, of the world are wiser than the children of light. You know what the book says? The president has a cabinet and law enforcement agencies, does he not? I'm going to tell you what Trump did yesterday during his inauguration. He's turning around getting ready to go on this parade. You know, parading. Here, America, you new president. Hey. They even get out and walk a few times. You know what he did before he went on the parade? He changed his whole security detail. You know what he was saying without saying a word? He remembered Kennedy. I'm telling you, you might not like this man as a predator, but this book ain't no fool. This book is one step ahead of him. He remembered Kennedy. And did you see what his wife was wearing? A powdered blue. A powdered blue suit. Woman's, right? What was Jacqueline Kennedy wearing? You people, boy, I tell you. Yep. Just go back to sleep and keep your utopia. Smoke all the doobies and take all the crack and everything else you want. But know your day is coming. You don't never pay attention to nothing, do you? So full of yourselves. He don't trust them boogers. He, Donald Trump does not trust the CIA. And why should he? Y'all hear Chucky? Chucky Schumacher? Schumacher, y'all hear? No, never mind. I ain't even gonna waste my time. I ain't gonna waste my time. Now, you know what you do? You'll go back to the computer, <laughs> calling yourself being a Marine. And this ain't even the book. This stuff you should have known in history. But go back and check it out. 
He changed his whole security detail because if you remember Kennedy, everybody thinking Oswald shot him. You go back and look at that video again and again and again, you'll see that this security detail guy that was in the car turned around and shot him. And it, if he got shot from the back, why in the hell is Jacqueline trying to crawl out the back? Natural instinct teaches you to go away from fire. Now, I know you ain't never been under fire, right? Well, maybe I ought to fire at you a few times. See where you run. <laughs> Man, I just, ooh. They all report to him, and they respectfully keep him informed. This is why they are, this is what we're missing in Israel. We're missing proper order and perspective, proper respect for authority. We're missing it. Malachi 3 8 says, but I am, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of Yahweh and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sins. Hear this, I pray you. You heads of the house of Jacob. Uh, ain't nobody in the head of me. I just listen to y'all and y'all alone. And y'all's looking at you, you fool. He going to set up his order just so that you, don't, you can bypass and go straight to him. You out of your mind. Anybody see my video that I made on Straightway University, how to get your prayers answered? Huh? But I, I made it known to you, if you want to get your prayers answered, we first got to deal with the things that you're doing to not get your prayers answered. Because you praying, and they still ain't getting answered, so that means you're under the deception that you're doing and meeting all the conditions. So we got to deal with what you're not doing so you'll know what to do. Sister Carol said, man, been with you all these years, I still keep watching y'all give you the desires of your heart. Wanted a dually, sitting down there. Wanted a backhoe, sitting down there. I said, man, the children are more happy than, and the bro, even the sisters, they ain't going to drive the backhoe any more happy than we are. I don't know why, but they, they happy for the backhoe. Everybody, you thought that the president himself came on his land with the way that backhoe rolled up in here and everybody was... I guess they realize how much work is going to save us. The back hole. We're excited about the back hole. We ain't got no money, but we're excited about the back hole. <laughs> Hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor and pervert. You don't think people do that? They build up Zion with what? Blood. And Jerusalem with what? That's what people try and do all the time in these ministries. That's the reason why you see people kick the traces and stuff because we won't let their iniquity flourish. You don't believe me? Pay attention to the fruit of their way after they leave. Go and listen to all these voices that rose up against us and see where they at. See if you would follow them as they follow Christ. See it. By their fruits, you should know them. How's it that you always, you, you don't know us, but you know them? Just go ahead and tell the truth. That's because that's some iniquity in your heart that agree with them. You got death working in you. I don't keep saying this. Ain't you got any discernment? Don't you know anything? What we deal with in Israel are the minds of untransformed wicked men who justify themselves. Period. That's what we're dealing with. Brother Dave Maskin, when we was up in D.C., he said, he says, yeah, I tune in several services. He says, but man, I tell you, it's intimidating. It's intimidating talking about the scholarship. It's intimidating the amount of stuff to be coming across that poor pit. It's y'all's work. 
It's the truth. Truth to set you free. If you want to be free. Hmm? If you want to be free. I hope y'all learned something today. Y'all see how stupid your pastor is? I'm pretty damn dumb, ain't I? I be asking myself all the time. I go, man, with the type of word that we get, have y'all picked it up yet Did I know something? Or know somebody? There ain't no man, no way a man can speak like this unless y'all with him. You don't never hear nobody blasting my sermons for being false. Even the heathen don't do that. They will not be able to resist the words of his wisdom. My love is shown towards y'all by how much I feed you. So I wonder how much I love y'all then. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Amazing, isn't it? Utterly amazing. Boy, I bet that shocked the shoes off somebody last night when I told him. Uh, yeah, I, he asked me about these books. I said, man, I ain't even read the whole Bible. Some of you on your seventh time. I bet he, what? Passed down. He ain't even read the whole Bible. Nope, sure haven't. I guarantee you there's plenty of chapters I ain't never read. Look at I'm looking. If I ain't read all of these, why would I go over in all these other books and try to read them? I'll read some of them, but I ain't. I'm sorry, folks. I ain't read. All, I haven't even read all of the Apocrypha. So, what is wisdom then? It cannot be your conventional way of being taught. Can't be. It's got to come by the Spirit. And the Spirit also tells us that in the latter times that some are going to depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, teaching lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And these spirits are also going to be commanded people to abstain from marriage and things that have been made, who have been created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And people don't know the truth. So I know that spirit is going to try to influence everybody else but you. That spirit is always on the attack with everybody. That's why it's called seducing spirits. Your safe passage is hiding y'all's word in your heart. I said it once. I said it a billion times over the years. Why do you think you don't want to read y'all's word? Because you don't want y'all telling you what to do. When you get down to it, you just don't want to be conformed to his image. There ain't no way. There ain't no other way to dress it up. You can tell the measure of a man or woman and their righteousness by how much they actually hide y'all's word in their heart. You'll see the function of their life by what they hide hidden in their heart. And the whole purpose of putting the word in your heart so that you won't even sin against it. Why? Because then the fear of y'all won't depart from you. But I know you don't have to read it. You wise. See, you want your mind to operate. You want your will to operate in this earth. That's why you don't want the word coming in. Because the word is going to teach you how to live it's going to instruct you and guide you not only that even your thoughts it'll direct your paths that's what the world will do but I know you ain't got no time for it I'm busy I got things I got to do What's the purpose of studying when, when all we're going to do is to hear your big mouth running? So that you will have some truth in you that would agree with truth when you hear it. 
So those light bulb moments would be surreal. Utterly amazing, isn't it? Wise as the Father is. All right. Hallelujah. Hey, we need y'all to go right down. All the elders and them who's been told to stay here, we got a meeting we have to take care of. All of y'all just head right on down. Um, and um, one of y'all brothers down there, bless the food. Once they get it prepared, all right? Uh, did y'all get anything out of this today? I mean, I don't want to be sitting up here thinking I'm wasting. I know there's other people on the side of it that's listening. I had a brother used to come here some time ago. He said, hey, does my shouting offend you? I said, no, just don't stop. You stop shouting, and I know what's taking place. You know, you first come, you on fire. Hey, rah, 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 rah. You painting a picture of what you really truly ain't. You the most religious person that ever been here. What happens when you stop shouting? Even the people that can't discern will say, uh oh. I know you're gonna wait till your change come, right? Mark went amazing. I can only hope these words are sinking deep down. Oh yeah, brother Arcelio, this ain't this ain't personal. This is just the truth. You're not cleaning your own eyes. That's amazing. He he's let me see, been in his faith a year or two, but he's wiser than the elders and wiser than the pastor. Why do you think all Israel disturbed? So now we have to put him away for a period so we can make sure that we maintain the integrity and structure of the whole. Glory to the king. Did y'all learn something about need to know? Hmm? I hope y'all I hope y'all listen to this again. Because you ain't got it all. I hope you listen again. You don't have it all. Faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of y'all. Some of y'all, I hope y'all have already started looking into. Did Eve really come from the rib of a man? Give y'all something to look at. I throw y'all bone every once in a while. You know, David's delight was musical instrument. He'd rather play a musical instrument than a woman. Y'all ain't never read a newsletter? Ain't that what the King James said? The delight of men are musical instruments. Is that true? Huh. Utterly amazing, huh? But unless it was bought out, you would have kept believing that. Does it in time. In time. In time. So study a little while, so when I touch on it, all of a sudden, you'll have light bulb moments. Now remember, I ain't writing till you get it. You've been believing a lie all this time, been true to you. Hallelujah, glory to the king. I come disturb your apple cart. I was like, oh. The thing you couldn't do before, now all of a sudden you want to do it. Because you believe you're being lied to. That's one flip side. The other side is, man, I ain't never heard that. I think I'm going to go look at this. And you should. 
you should always be like the Bereans. Hallelujah. Y'all was good, didn't he? Yeah. Let's stay in Israel. Hope y'all learned something. Yeah. I'll be out here tomorrow, myself and Ella Roos. We're going to be heading up to Kansas City uh, to plant our brother. Hallelujah. Bless his heart. Hallelujah. Lord to the king. Glory, glory. Bro, Chris, good brother. Yeah. A wonderful brother. Yeah. Going to miss him. Hallelujah. Like his children doing pretty good. Y'all y'all pray for that family because now the, the heathen mothers are trying to get back some of the children. You know it's going to be opposition. Y'all know that, right? So when we get there, man, we need to make sure we try to give some type of guidance in how to handle these situations. You understand what I mean? Most people ain't never, it's one thing to experience death in the family, but it's another thing to experience death in the assembly to where you see these people every single day. You eat with them, you spend time with them. Brothers and sisters in the Most High Yah is closer than any natural brother and sisters in the, in the world. People in the faith is a whole lot closer than, a whole lot closer. Just tell the truth, most of you don't, most of you don't have any connection with natural family except you just know. That's why we're family. Hallelujah. Y'all, we thank you for all things. We pray these sins sink deep down in our hearts. Magnificent name, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. King come. Hey, by the way, <clears throat> Brother Steve should have done a newsletter. Maybe next week, Brother Shane, maybe next week, uh, we're going to stream. We're going to try. We're going to try to stream Blog Talk Radio uh, on Google. On Google uh, while we're sitting there because we're not moving much and stuff. Uh, just so the people um, out there that has curious minds, they can hear some more preaching too. See, I can go out into all the world, like Christ said, sitting at that desk. Touch more people. Look, look at you. Look, I mean, I got one, one person that come from Lafayette, Tennessee. One. One. She's sitting right there. With all this truth, that I'm preaching and teaching. Hmm. No one of them scribes and Pharisees wanted to stone. Only unto one was he sent. <laughs> Bake me a cake. <laughs> See, they could pick it up real fast. He ain't talking about us. <laughs> Uh-oh, look at him looking.